All right, so there's gonna need to be a little bit of backstory on this. And this was actually a uh, school project, but not really. It was like for a test or something. But uh, it um it required you to find an ending for this story, I believe. As you can see, the pump right here. Well, you can't, but you get it. imagine you are Mr. Brown, the character in the poem. Write a story in which you describe from your point of view, your experience of being blown down the slope all the way to the road. Describe what your descent is like and explain how to react to it. In this story, be sure to use descriptive words and phrases to develop the story. Make sure your story has a clear ending. Um, I ended up doing uh, five pages. And uh, the whole thing was, uh, this prepares us for like the end of grade, or yeah, in a grade test. And yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. But that's how my story ended up for right now. So just five, it's all single space too. 12 font, single space, so actual like five pages. But uh, let's get into the story then. I would also like to point out that I um I didn't actually like go through and proofread after I was done. So whatever is like on here, all the mistakes, I might just ay ay ay. I might just like browse over them or I might actually correct them. Well, let's get on to the story. It was a nice day out, is what I would say if it was. The day was odd. In a sense, the sky was clear as a freshly made glass bottle, but the but it was so windy that the windmills were spinning at incredible speeds, so much so that the human eye couldn't even see it. The air wasn't fast enough to result in a hurricane or tornado, as I've been in both, but it still isn't something that just ignore outright. The land was clear. The trees were dancing in the wind as if slow jazz was moving, moving so freely yet. It seemed as if it was composed into perfection. The flowers seemed to be struggling to stay at root, but the wind was blowing and all of the petals were flowing like silk through the air. I... I couldn't help it. This beauty was too great to pass up. I ran out of the cabin at great speeds, just to witness the petals cover the sky with all of their seasonal glory. The pinks, purples, and lavenders all soaring across the sky with the birds. I was enticed by the sight, the smell, and the feeling as if someone was there on my right hand, holding me with their warm touch, something I haven't felt in a very long time. <sighs> the thought of it put me in a depressed state. Just... The wind started to die down. As I turned around to head back into my cabin, I noticed something strange about it. It was the tip of my tongue, but it wasn't quite there yet. Ah, so that's what it was. I, I remember now, the feeling of wonder and exploration. I sat down and just looked at the cabin. Brings back memories, wouldn't you say, Stephanie? No response as usual. Stephanie was my childhood friend who stayed with me in this cabin that we got from Mr. Brown. But one day she just disappeared. I thought maybe she went out to get food, but she never came back. I assumed the worst. I went into town asking every single man, woman, child, and dog have they seen her. I even asked old man Jenkins if he seen her. I even he no one knew where she went, so I went and checked all our favorite hiding spots as children and as adults. I checked the trees, under the bed, and the cellar, and attic respectively, yet she wasn't there in any of them. I even checked her super secret hiding spot that no one will ever find, yet no one. I went back to the front door. It'll be fine. She's... She's just playing a prank on me. <laughs> so funny. She'll be here any minute. I just... <laughs> I, I, I just have to wait. 
tears started to run down my eyes as waterfalls exist. It was never ending. I cried for hours, waiting for her to return. I went to the bed and just lied there, hoping that she'll be right next to me when I wake up. But the next morning, nobody. Eventually, days went by, then months, and finally years. I had all but forgotten about Stephanie. Once every few years, if the weather was right, there would be flowers that she loved and bloomed for the season. They were beautiful flowers with petals the color of pink, purple, and lavender. But what made her really love the flowers were how the petals looked as if they flew through the air. It was as if they were a person on the other world that made her feel so warm inside. Once she had seen it for the first time as a child, she never never miss a day where the flowers were blown into the air. Even when it wasn't the season for it, she was surprisingly still there. Stephanie, what are you doing out here in this weather? You'll get sick, I exclaimed. Hold on, I have to see the flowers, she revolted. Flowers? What? They aren't even in season, I replied. I, I know, but I can feel that they are here. I just know it, Stephanie refuted. Come on, we're going inside. I'd rather not get you sick. Graham and Gramps are waiting for you inside, I said as I started dragging her inside. No! She screamed. I am seeing these flowers. She was gripping the ground as hard as she could. She was resisting so much. She started digging into the dirt, and right when I was about to get her inside, she screamed, Look! As I turned my head up, all I saw were millions of petals covered the sky with a luminescence of pink. It was as if they were lighting up the night sky. Once I was encaptured by this state, Stephanie quickly, quickly got loose and ran into the yard to witness the beauty of the petals. I was in such awe, I slowly walked and joined her to witness this beautiful moment as well. This is... This is impossible. They aren't e even in season. How how are they here? I stuttered. Stephanie didn't even respond. She was just there enjoying the view of the petals soar gracefully over the night sky. What a fond memory. If only she was here to have the same with me. We could be laughing here together. <laughs> As I wiped tears from my face. Afterwards, I noticed something from the corner of my eye. It was... It was one of the pink petals. I paused immediately. Tears almost started to cover up my eyes when the wind started blowing again, and it led the petal to the hill. The one that I just remembered the previous owner, Mr. Brown, warned us about. I stared at the petal as it just glided down the hill so effortlessly. As that happened, the worst thought of my mind crossed. Stephanie must have fallen down the hill. My heart sank as I thought about it. I inched closer and closer over the edge and peeked over. The hill was extremely steep. I couldn't even see the bottom. It was almost as if it was at the edge of the world. The pedal was still falling. It had gotten so far down the hill, I could no longer see the glow it once had. I started leaning over the hill to see if I could get a better look, but nothing. It was all so dark. I wanted to see Stephanie again so badly. I I started to tread down the hill. I took it one step at a time, slowly descending, but it started to get more slippery and I started to lose grip on the ground. I tried to grip the grass. It was no use. I started to increase in speed. The boots I had on, I tried to place them on the ground to slow my descent, but it wasn't working. I started panicking. I was doing everything I could to try to stop my descent, but everything I did wasn't going my way. And that's when I made my fatal mistake. As I was, as I was descending, I put all of my force to stop myself and I stomped on the ground. That ended up propelling me down the hill even faster. But now I wasn't in control of where I went anymore. I started tumbling down, getting dizzy. I couldn't tell which side was up anymore. It felt like I was going to hurl, 
but the feeling went away almost immediately when I felt a sharp pain on my side. It was a rock that I hit while I was falling. I wasn't even able to let out a scream of pain as I hit another rock. The pain felt unbearable. Tears, tears weren't even able to fall down my face as I saw them fly in the air as I fell. I was wondering how long I was going to be falling down the hill. It felt like hours. My blood was getting low. I was slowly losing consciousness. I couldn't feel pain anymore. I can only see what I hit occasionally. But I know that I have cuts and bruises all over my body. As I started to see only black. There was a section of the hill coming up with thorns. And I quickly braced for impact as I saw this with the rest of the little energy I had. But it was useless. I passed through them and a the pain suddenly returned. And I let out a scream of pain so powerful it could be heard from miles away. It took all of my energy. I... I couldn't think. It was getting cold, dark, and lonely. I started hallucinating because I saw Stephanie at the bottom of the hill. And before I lost the rest of my consciousness, I let out one last grin. I'm... I'm sorry I couldn't find you, Stephanie. I thought to myself, out of nowhere, it felt like I heard a response. It's okay, you're with me now. It felt like I had died and gone to heaven. I don't know how long I was out. Minutes? Hours? Days? I lost track of time. But all I could think about was Stephanie. She was probably the one that kept me alive. But when I awoke, I was in a... Hospital? Where, where am I? I question. You are in section 5, area 1B, a mysterious voice replied. I looked around to see if I could find someone, and I saw what looked like a figure in the distance. Who, who are you? I replied. I am the person who made sure you're still alive, and made sure you stayed alive. You can call me Dr. Halsey. Were you the one that brought me here? No, I wasn't. She was. Dr. Halsey pointed. When I turned my head to look at what she was pointing to, I was surprised because there was no one there. Who, who was supposed to be- ah! I was shocked by a pair of hands around my abdomen. Uh, personal sp- But I was interrupted. SHUT UP! <laughs> Screamed a person behind me. Okay, okay, sheesh. I didn't know I was that lu- But my thought was cut off when I heard crying. I turned slowly to look behind me who it was, and to my shock, it was her, Stephanie. She turned her head up and looked me directly into my eyes with tears now hers. Are you stupid? Why would you come down the hill? Stephanie kept screaming. I, 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 I as I stuttered for an answer, she slapped me and hugged me tightly. Ow, 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 hey, could you let up a bit? I pleaded, but she refused. Why? Why? Why did you come down here? I, I thought... I thought... What did you... What did you think? I thought you were dead, idiot! She screamed at the top of her lungs. I heard a loud thump, and I went to go investigate, and all I saw there was your body. Bloodied and bruises everywhere. I couldn't handle the pain of what looked like your lifeless body. But if you were alive, I didn't want to be the reason you wouldn't survive. So I went to see if you were still alive. And you were! I didn't give it another thought and picked up your limp body immediately and brought you to Dr. Halsey, our best doctor in this place. Halsey said that she didn't know if you were going to survive. And if you did, you wouldn't have a full recovery. So I stayed by your side. I was worried. Never mind. Worry, worry doesn't even begin to describe how I felt at that moment. As Stephanie proceeds to cry her eyes out again, I turned around and gave her a hug in return. I'm, I'm sorry for making you worry, but what happened? One day you were with me, and then you left for two years? I would really like to know, please, I asked. What? Did you say two years? She questioned. Yes, it's been two years since anyone has seen you. Even in the town, I was worried that you had fallen down the hill. But then I saw one of the petals from a flower that you enjoyed, and I followed it down here. 
but instead of sliding all the way down here, I fell from the top and ended up, you know, I responded. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm so, so sorry. I, I didn't mean for you to worry. It wasn't my intention to lead you down here. I was hoping that everyone would forget about me, Stephanie stated. I looked down at my battered hands. Why? Why? Why would you do- <coughs> I was screaming before I started coughing up blood. <coughs> uh, answer my question, <coughs> Stephanie. My face turned quickly, turned into anger and disgust when she looked away without saying a single word. <coughs> really? After all this time, after you helped me, after I went looking for you, after all the pain and the grief that I went through, I had to cry myself to sleep for six months after I couldn't find you. And you could at least send a message that you were okay? But she didn't respond. He stayed there with her head down on the side of the bed. I was in, you know what? I apologize. I don't know what you went through. It seems you went through something since you were worried that I was down here. I said in a quiet voice. Stay, the bumble said. Huh? I asked. Stay with us, please. You can start all over like I did. We could be friends again. This reunion doesn't have to end so soon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. St Stephanie pleaded. I don't know if I can trust you anymore, Stephanie, I responded. And why not? What evidence have I given that makes you not trust me anymore, huh? What reason? Have you found a wife, a new best friend, or is it because I haven't gotten to you for the reason why I left, huh? Or is it because I didn't tell you I wasn't able to tell you even if I wanted to, huh? Jeez! And here I thought that we were best friends. I guess those two years really proved me wrong, huh? Snef Stephanie proceeded to march out of the room. I reached out my arm to stop her, but I was already too little too late. It seemed like I lost a friend, but I've come this far. I refuse to let one little argument ruin our years of friendship. Dr. Halsey, how long will it take me to recover? I have a friend to get to. Like a bird on a tree. End of chapter one. I'm just there probably won't be another chapter, but god dang. I got time. This went so, oh, so poorly. I need to get my reading skills up, or at least like, put it into a script format. Because honestly, it's all just words small. like right beside each other, so some of the we words I just stumbled upon, and it was <laughs> it was bad. If I it's ever so like make a legit story, you I'm really me. going to need to like put it in a format where I can read we meant to be. and not stumble upon my own words in the great and, outdoors. and like proofread it so it actually makes sense. Forever free. Ugh, but this. No, oh, no. This is an interesting experience. Being an author and a narrator at the same time. What? I can't believe it. Where, where's my award? Huh? Where is it? I'm waiting for it. Where is it?